It's the BWI Daily Recruiting Show, the first one in May. I'm Greg Pickle, Ryan Snyder from Blue White Illustrated on 3.com. We are talking recruiting on today's episode because there is a lot of news coming out of April and a lot to look forward to over the next few weeks as we kick off May here with the spring evaluation period ongoing. Uh, we're going to wrap up April here and what we learned during the month of Penn State's final half of spring practice. We're going to dive into a little bit about what Penn State fans should know about the upcoming June official visit weekends, and then we'll dive into some top schools and players who have Penn State on their short list as well. So, Ryan, welcome to May. It is a busy time for the coaches being on the road, and then they're going to have guys on campus before long, too. Yeah, well, um, it, looks, it looks like the next two weekends will be kind of quiet. Uh, now I say that, of course, someone I'm sure will pop up. But uh, yep. May 21st is kind of shaping up to be the next big recruiting weekend from what I've gathered so far, um, which is always the case. That's my anniversary, and my wife hates that. So that's just, uh, <laughs> that's always a sticking point every year. But, uh, yeah, it looks like that'll be like the one kind of junior day-esque uh, visit weekend here in May, and uh, you, you roll right into June. Um, you know, of course, whiteout camps that first weekend, that'll be massive. And then you got official visits basically the, the three weekends after that. So, uh, but yeah, I also wouldn't be totally shocked to see, you know, a player pop up one of these weekends, just kind of take it a personal visit, maybe somebody who wasn't able to make it up uh, in March and April. And then, of course, Penn State's coaches are out on the road evaluating a ton of players. Uh, you know, I'm expecting them to, to be really all over. You know, I know I know they're going down to Miami uh, to see a bunch of players down there who uh, are potentially going to take some official visits. You know, we just did a story or I just did a story, excuse me, uh, today on, on all the official visits, uh, which is kind of what we're going to get into. Uh, I'll just kind of lead into it right now. But yep. uh, right now, there, there's kind of. I don't want to get first off. There's there's a lot of names that I'm not going to discuss on this podcast just because uh, you know they they stay behind the paywall and you know our subscribers kind of deserve that info. But there also are a lot of names who have made their decisions, you know, or their their announcements as far as when they're going to visit uh, publicly. Uh, so I mean, we'll kind of just start. Like I said, June June 10th to the 12th is shaping up to be the first big visit weekend. You know, when I look. Um, at the calendar, it kind of I get the impression that that weekend and then June 17th and the 19th, of course, are really when Penn State wants guys to visit. Uh, if guys just can't make it those two weekends, they'll they'll shuffle things around right now. I do not expect anyone to be here that first weekend. Like I said, the, the whiteout camp. It's such a massively important camp for them, and they get a lot of talent right. for that anyway, right? So I, I don't right now. I don't think they want guys there that weekend, but I also wouldn't be surprised if we get uh, you know a week out from that, and you know somebody pops up for an, an OV that weekend. So, uh, but we're just kind of rolling into it. I mean, Trayon Webb, Dakari Nelson, Kobe Keenum are kind of three major guys uh, who have kind of already made it clear that they're going to take uh, official visits to Penn State that weekend. Uh, T Frank with the Kari Nelson graphic there, I like it, buddy. Uh, you know, Dakari's massively uh, important, and then Penn State feelings that they have a real shot with him too. I was just talking to a source last night, trying to get a better feel for their safety board, who you know we'll we'll get into here before the end of the podcast. But uh, they they think they have a real chance with Dakari Nelson, and and right now I kind of think they do too. Auburn and Tennessee are there, of course. Dakari came all the way up for Penn State to see, I believe it was the Rutgers game in November. Uh, you know, whenever you're driving all that way from Selma, Alabama to see Penn State play Rutgers, there's got to be real interest. But the relationship is really strong there. Um, you know, Greg, Greg, have you talked to the car before? I, I can't remember if you interviewed him or if I did. I do not you know, believe I have. I was just okay. actually pulling up his on three uh, on three profile. No, I don't believe I have. I think that was one of those, uh, as, as most uh, longtime listeners of this podcast know, there are some guys we just have a more challenging time getting a hold of than others. <laughs> and he has been, at least for me, one of them. Uh, but Dakari Nelson, a four star in the on three consensus uh, top 250 player overall, a safety. And, you know, Penn State's dipped into Alabama before, both for uh, guys who play up front and also in the secondary. You know, I think Christian Campbell's probably the most recent example of that, unless I'm missing somebody. But, well, yeah, Harrison this is Wallace, not... of course. I'm Harrison sorry. Wallace. Trey Wallace. Right. Yes. On the other on side the of the road. ball. Yep. Correct. But, yep. but Christian's kind of the most, uh, you know, he went on to, to get drafted. Didn't stay in the league for long, but I think he's the name that right. Penn State fans think of for sure. Absolutely. So Penn State has had success going down to different parts of the South, of course, Alabama being one of those. So, yeah, he's the one that jumps off the page to me. There's no question about it. It's a position that 
there is some need there. I think that, you know, Jair Brown has one more season left. Keaton Ellis might have two at most. Uh, you do have some younger guys there with Jalen Reed and some others that uh, Penn State fans should be excited about. It's the Key Wheatley, another one, too. So, I mean, there's a pipeline there for the next couple of seasons, but I think it's a pretty important position in this class, and there's a reason they made him a priority. There's no question about that. Well, I'm starting to think that they could take three safeties. And, I mean, I'll kind of just – I, I kind of alluded to it, but I'm going to roll into it now. Yeah. Uh, there, there's a player that we're really kind of watching right now who's kind of popped up, not out of nowhere, but – uh, you know, we knew there was a relationship there, and his name's King Mac, uh, which hell of a name, by the way, King Mac, yes. uh, from St. Thomas Aquinas, Conrad Hussey's teammate. Uh, I mean, so one of my coworkers put a, a pick in for him to end up at Penn State last week. I I posted on Friday that I was seriously considering it, and I still am, and I think I might here soon. Uh, he just hasn't visited yet, so like I think that's kind right. of the only thing that kind of gives me hesitation. But when I talk to sources, I mean. I fully have the impression that King Mac wants to commit to Penn State. And I get the fully get the impression that Penn State will take him. You know, he ran a 10 6 400 meter this year, which really impressed them. It was a slightly wind aided, but, uh, you know, for the most part, it, you know, it still legally counts, um, you know, so it wasn't uh, wind aided uh, to, you know, a really high degree or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's just a lot of talk that, that he's seriously kind of considering it. Uh, I, I will say on the pod that, you know, he is set to take an official visit that next weekend, June 17th to the 19th. So it will be interesting, um, you know, to see if he waits or. Or if he does not, but man, from talking to people, I don't think that's that's going to happen. I mean, I, I I'm going to probably prep a commitment story here in the next couple of days, uh, or maybe even today, if I'm being honest, because I I do think that that something could pop up really kind of at any point. I've reached out to him multiple times, haven't been able to get in touch with him, but I have talked to his coaches a little bit, and uh, nobody is shooting down the fact that it could happen at any point in the near future. So uh, that's kind of all uh, all I need to say, I think. Yeah, so obviously Penn State already, uh, as you mentioned, getting Conrad Hussey out of that program in Florida. Uh, Max, a player who, if you look at the film, if you look at the track numbers, I mean, the speed seems to be legitimate. And, you know, I, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong here, but Penn State has had a very hit or miss time, mostly miss, at uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. So to be able to possibly get two guys out of there would be certainly notable in this cycle if it was able to, mm -hmm. uh, to work out that way for the, the Nittany Lions. Yeah, I mean, we I did that, you know, we're going to end this podcast talking about some things we learned in April, and that was one of the big things that I think we really took away. Uh, so, I mean, you know, King Mac, of course, Conrad Hussey, there were two other players and Jordan Lyles and Samaj Samal Jackson uh, who came up for the blue-white game. So those are four players right there. Uh, you know, Isaiah Hardage also came up. Uh, he ended up committing to Colorado then. But, I mean, there, there's been a handful of guys from St. Thomas Aquinas coming up and visit Penn State. And then when you have Conrad Hussey committing, you got King Mac, like seriously considering committing. You know, there, there's some some real momentum with that school right now. And really, there seems to be some real momentum in Florida. I mean, again, I'm not going to give away our entire official visit list because, again, that needs to stay with subscribers. I'm not a big promotion guy, but hey, guys, come on. It's a dollar. It's going to end fairly soon, I believe. Although I thought it was going to end April 30th, and it's still going, right? So I don't even know when it's going to end anymore. But, uh, you know, there, there's a. will just say there's a lot of Florida guys uh, expected to come up here for OVs. You know, I have, I think, a little over a half a dozen now. And, you know, it'll probably end up closer to being a dozen by the time it's all said and done. So they're they're hitting the, the, the Sunshine State pretty hard and some other states, too. Um, you know, which again, we'll, we'll get into that at the end of this podcast, but, uh, to just kind of, to go back into what we were talking about originally, which is official visits, uh, there, you know, there's a few other guys that, that for that June 17th to 19th visit, uh, you know, weekend that I want to hit on, uh, look, it came out last week that Tamir Robinson is going to be up that weekend. Of course, Tamir has been an incredibly important recruit for Penn state now for, Really over a year and a half, basically, uh, you know, he, he admitted that uh, Penn State's going to be here that or he's going to be at Penn State that weekend. And uh, I'm trying to figure out where is his other one set for? I think well, West Virginia uh, is going to be one of the early weekends. And he still I think he still has to set up a couple others or excuse me. Yeah, I have to double check on that one. But uh, we also know Ronnie Gallagher is going to be here that weekend. He's a massively important guy. Uh, a few other suits that I'm still working on. Uh, I do believe the one guy I haven't really put out there too much yet, but I do believe is going to be here is London Montgomery. Uh, London's a PA guy. I think that one's kind of kind of get out there kind of soon. But I am expecting him there. Uh, a few others. Derek LeBlanc, you know, that's public information. He's already kind of hinted that out there. He'll be up that weekend. Tony Rojas, of course, uh, who we'll hit on a little bit more in a second here. Um, and then I'm also watching Zach Owens, uh, the, the Georgia offensive lineman, who uh, right now I, I, I left him off 
just because I was waiting for it to be confirmed. So like if a subscriber is reading this, you didn't see him on that list that I posted earlier today. I just I just was told it wasn't 100 percent locked in yet. But but Zach is uh, expected to be here that weekend. And, you know, one of the last thing I'll continue with Zach is I think Penn State's the favorite. And I, I think he might actually get him. Of course, he's a New York kid. And that was one kind of thing that he really hit on uh, in our interview. You know, he's he has yes, he's down in Eagles Landing Christian in, in Georgia right now. But uh you know, his parents are, I think he said Brooklyn and Bronx. And, uh, you know, he, he he has a lot of ties to the area. So I'm really starting to think that Zach Owens, Evan Link, and and, and Samson Okanola are, are the three tackles we should look at. You know, again, for the longest time, I've been saying Link and Samson. Uh, but I think Zach Owens now firmly needs to be in that mix. Owens, a top 200 player in the on three consensus, a four star in the nation's number 16 offensive tackle. Uh, we've heard it from fans, subscribers, which, by the way, you can do that at bluewhiteillustrated.com if you're so interested. And we obviously are wondering what you're waiting for because that dollar deal will not wait <laughs> for you forever. So check us out, bluewhiteillustrated.com. But, you know, Ryan, obviously that's one of the things we hear most about. Where are the tackles? Where are the tackles? Where are the tackles? Penn State loses Rasheed Walker to the NFL draft. He goes in round seven to the Packers. Olu Fashan is expected to take over for him, but uh, it goes without saying uh, whether you've looked at the depth chart lately or not, the tackle is a position of major need at this point in time. And Penn State has done a nice job with the interior offensive linemen, but they need to sew things up with the tackles they're targeting in this class. And mm -hmm. uh, Owen certainly makes a lot of sense as being someone at the top of that board. Yeah, I'm just curious to see what Samson Okanola does because I mean he's he told me one thing and then he kind of told Chad Simmons something a little bit different here in the recent um, what was it recent weeks I think it was was that last week I think he he posted yeah. a story on Samson but uh, you know to me when I, when I talked to Samson he he kind of hinted more that he wanted to end his recruitment a bit earlier uh, than what his brother Samuel did right Samuel ended up at right. Pittsburgh you know he originally had all these offers from elite programs and he waited till the very end. And I'm, I mean, you know, I'm happy he ended up a pit. Seems like a good fit for him and everything. But I also kind of feel like he uh, maybe hurt himself with some other schools that he was interested in for the for the fact that he just waited as long as he did. So whether Sampson, you know, learns from that experience and commits sooner or not, I'm not sure because uh, Chad kind of posted a story last week saying that uh, he may go well into the season now, which again was not kind of what Samson was telling me uh back in, you know, I think it was like January or something like that. So just that that'll be something to watch. Right now I don't have him uh confirmed for an official visit. So if he does decide to to not take an OV until Penn State until um till you know the season. Uh now I don't get me wrong, I think Penn State would still find room for him. He's that he's that important to them. But uh I just know Penn State would prefer that not to happen. I mean they would love to get him here for an OV and, and try and, of course, lock him up as soon as possible. So Penn State has much to do on the recruiting trail here again throughout May and then into June. Ryan, let's cover the last weekend of June quick before we move on to some other topics of note. Uh, Penn State and schools across the country will have that one final weekend, June 24th, I believe it is, uh, to host players before the midsummer, if you will, dead period begins where there's no visitors, there's no nothing, but probably lots of commitments. So uh, yeah. what should we be looking forward to there? Yeah, that's not a dead period. That's 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 maybe right. the busiest month of the year now. Uh, yeah. But right now, I mean, there's only two guys set to to visit that weekend at the moment. Both have been kind of out there publicly. Uh, Cam Selden, we're expecting, of course, to come up from Virginia, and Jameel Lyons, of course, who has already committed to Penn State. I mean, Selden, look, Selden, I still look at as Penn State's maybe their 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 top safety prospect, but. Uh, you know, again, I'm watching King Mac. Conrad Hussey's already committed. Uh, Dakari Nelson, of course, will be up here before that. Like this safety board is is deep, and that's a great thing, right? I mean, that's why I'm really starting to think that uh, yeah. you know, three safeties. I mean, maybe even four, just from the simple fact that some of these guys have some serious size to them, and they could maybe kind of grow into uh, what T. Frank always calls like that 11th defender kind of role, uh, where you're a little bit a little bit of a linebacker, a little bit of a defensive back, kind of what we're expecting uh, Jonathan Sutherland to play this year. So. Uh, just be really interesting, man. Safety has really always been like an intriguing board to me just because of the talent there. Uh, but now, I mean, I, I could realistically maybe even I mean, three, I think, is definitely realistic. And, you know, if, if they had three commits and someone like Cam Selvin still out there in, in the season, how are you not going to take that? So just just be something interesting to watch. And, uh, you know, again, he's locked in for that June 24, 26 weekend. One last thing I will say about that weekend is 
uh, Penn State has one of its most important, uh, what I think is one of their most important camps that weekend in the seven on seven tournament, which is that Friday. They have two this year, but it kind of feels like that second one is going to be the one where all the top guys come, you know, as we've seen before. They they had two, I think it was in 2019 before the pandemic, and one was kind of more local teams, and the other one was, you know, stacked with all the Gonzagas and the, the Mathas and the preps and all those kind of schools out there. So uh, just right. I'll be curious to see how much that seven on seven tournament and everything that goes into that seven on seven tournament, because it is a massive operation with all the players that are here, uh, how much that maybe limits that, that June 24th to the 26th weekend. So something to keep an eye on here down the road. But again, like I said in the beginning, I really fully expect those two middle weekends in June, the 10th to 12th, 17th and the 19th. You know, that's really when I expect Penn state to try and funnel all of their, their top guys there. And, you know, for some reason they can't make it work. They'll, they'll find other spots to get them here when they can. It's the BWI Daily Recruiting Show on Tuesday, May 3rd. Ryan Snyder just filling you in there on the latest Penn State recruiting official visit plans. I'm Greg Pickle. You can join us at bluewhiteillustrated.com for $1 for one year of access to Ryan's full official visitor list and much more, including some recent insight on the next two players we're going to talk to. So uh, if you've been listening to the show now for about the last month, you've heard a lot about Tony Rojas and Tamir Robinson because they're guys, or I'm sorry, and Rodney Gow well, Robinson too, but Rodney Gallagher is the yeah. other one uh, who was we talked about quite a bit uh and things are starting to come into focus for both of those guys ryan it's that time of year where guys have seen between junior days and games last year and possible spring practice and or spring game visits that they're kind of starting to get all their ducks in a row here the the main contenders are starting to stand out and it really feels like uh that's the case for these two guys who are atop uh their respective position boards at wide receiver and linebacker yeah, of course. I mean, look, so uh, Rodney Gallagher was just up here this past weekend. And one thing I didn't even quite realize was the fact that Rodney Savory really had a personal day uh, with, with the staff. Right. You know, he came to three games. And then when he was here last June, it was really for the seven on seven tournament that his team participated in. So, yeah, he got to meet with the staff a little bit that day. Uh, but those four previous visits, you know, weren't uh, anything close to like what he got this past weekend. So we're talking about not only do you have the whole entire staff to yourself that day, um, but really just kind of uh, going above and beyond in different ways. So not only just seeing the campus, but, you know, having lunch in Beaver Stadium, you know, doing a photo shoot across pretty much the whole stadium we saw and and maybe even a few other places on campus. That's something we've, we've never really seen before. So uh, it really kind of felt like Penn State went a little bit above and beyond there, uh, which they absolutely should, right? I mean, not only is Rodney Gallagher a heck of a player, but – uh, everything about him uh, off the field is exactly what they want. I mean, I, I he's right. one of my favorites. I know I'm not supposed to have favorites, but I'll be very blunt. I mean, Rodney Gallagher is, is, is one of my favorites as far as like a person I've gotten to know and uh, wherever he ends up, you know, I, I, I think fans should, should pull for him because he's a great kid. Uh, but he, he also put out there, you know, four official visits uh, coming up here in June. We know Penn State will be 17th to the 19th. Like I said, uh, West Virginia will be the third to the fifth. Notre Dame will be the 10th to the 12th. And then uh, he's actually going to go right to Oklahoma State right after that. So the 13th to the 15th. Uh, I've been talking for a long time, man, that, that I think Notre Dame is Penn State's top competitor there. But, uh, you know, don't want to sleep on West Virginia either. Uh, I'll be curious to see where he goes for that for that fifth visit. You know, I've, I've kind of thought that Oregon or Texas, one of those two makes the most sense. I think Texas kind of makes the most sense uh, just because of that relationship with Brendan Marion, of course. But uh, Penn State's in a good spot there. I, I still feel like they should be considered the favorite. You know, this past weekend, like I said, was was massively important for for a handful of different reasons. Um, you know, just that one on one time, really. Uh, and see, seeing the whole campus. I mean, that's that's an incredibly important part in the recruiting process. And I didn't realize that was something he's never really done. But uh, I think a pretty good visit there for Rodney and uh, one that should have Penn State considered the favorite going into OVs, but um, I'm definitely not going to sleep on Notre Dame. And, uh, you know, I think if you're sleeping on West Virginia a little bit too, that that might be uh, not a very good decision. Yeah, we've talked a little bit about this recently, but the fact that, you know, there were some questions on our Lions Den forum recently about why uh, players take so many visits to campus. And the way Ryan just laid that all out there, if you need to go back, rewind a little bit, hit that 30-second uh, back thing and hear what he said there. But that's why guys do it, right? I mean, the game day experience, I think that – from the outside looking in, you would think that it has uh, the ability to answer a lot of questions that a, a player in his family might have, but it really doesn't. Those days are crazy, both for the, the 
the recruits coming here and having the travel and all that, and the coaches obviously uh, getting ready for one of just 12 or 13 or whatever it might be games a year. So these days where they can get on campus, if it's in a small group or in an individual setting, I think that that really is beneficial for both the player and the school who lands that opportunity. And of course, Penn State uh, just did that with Gall- with, uh, with Rodney. So uh, time will tell where things go there, but a three-team race shaping up. And then Tony Rojas, the next guy we'll just touch on briefly because, again, we have talked a good bit about him. You made your predictions last week, I believe it was, uh, in terms of where uh, which schools would end up on his list. And I think you got almost all of them. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, well, Miami, Tennessee was the ones I was torn on. You know, I, I, I thought it would be one of those two just from the simple fact that they are – uh, becoming giants in the NIL world. I mean, Miami is, I mean, just look at the basketball money they threw around recently. Uh, it was pretty incredible. And of course, uh, everybody knows that Tennessee right now feels like the most aggressive uh, program out there. Well, I guess maybe aside from USC with all the Jordan Addison news, maybe we can end this podcast on that, right? But uh, but yeah, I mean, both of those schools are just kind of, uh, you know, incredibly aggressive from the NIL perspective. So they made a lot of sense. But of course, the other three who I think are the three main favorites are Penn State, Clemson, and Georgia. So, uh, you know, Penn State's going to be that 17th to the 19th, like I said. Clemson's going to get them that first weekend, third to the fifth. Uh, then he'll go down to Miami just a couple days later, ninth to the 11th. Uh, and then Georgia slated to get him that final weekend in June, the 24th to the 26th. Uh, be curious to see if another fifth uh, visit gets in there. Of course, he dropped the top four. So, Right now, you would think, you know, especially with him recently dropping a top four, that it'll just be those four. But uh, there, there will certainly be no shortage of schools uh, trying to get him on campus for for a fifth visit. And you know, the fact that it looks like, um, you know, that Miami visit will, will be a midweek visit. You know, that there is room to to maybe fit him on for for another weekend. But I don't know with Tony, man. I mean, I. I I've felt good for the longest time, but when I see Clemson, Georgia, and Miami as Penn State's competition. All of which, I mean, maybe I don't know enough about Clemson, but I, I know pretty darn well that uh, Georgia and Miami are on a different level from an NIL perspective. I'm, I've been trying to, uh, I guess the best way, not to be negative, I guess you'd say, but uh, Penn State's going to lose out on recruits this year because of NIL. I feel like that is absolutely inevitable. They are working hard on improving their NIL situation, but there are quite a few schools that are on a different level right now, and a couple of those are one of them. So, I'm starting to wonder about that a little bit. Uh, again, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to change my pick for Penn State. I still feel good. I think there's a good relationship there. There's a lot of things that work. Um, but when push comes to shove, somebody's going to get get pulled away because of some NIL money. And uh, this is an interesting one to me. So we'll, we'll see what happens. All right, let's get into the final half, or I guess portion rather, of this edition of the BWI Daily Recruiting Show. Uh, We're talking a lot about official visits, things that are happening in the future, or prospects will make decisions down the road. But let's take a minute to look back here as we wrap things up on Tuesday, May 3rd, and Penn State continues hitting the road recruiting. Ryan, you had a story over at bluewhiteillustrated.com on Monday uh, to kick the week off here, looking at what... It is that we learned about Penn State recruiting in April, the top takeaways. And, I mean, this is one of those stories where uh, you could go in just about any number of directions. So Mm -hmm. uh, from that story, what do you want to highlight here? Let's kick around some of that and uh, see where the chips fall. Well, one big thing was really just the number of recruits that came to Penn State in April. Uh, I I, I was estimating it was around 300 or so guys that – you know, will play division one football, you know, to some level after it was funny after I posted this, I had a, a buddy of mine text me uh, and they actually told me that it was actually 700 total recruits uh, in March and April. So just while spring practice was going on, which was an incredible number. So that 300 or so kind of makes sense uh, when you stack that up. Of course, 150 came to the blue white game alone. And uh, when you look at just kind of those scholarship guys that we know about, uh, there was about 120 or so just in April. Uh, and then, of course, there's a lot of friends of friends and, you know, potential walk ons that kind of to fill out those lists. Right. But uh, a couple of things, of course, with, with April and, and I've hit on this uh, in previous mailbags and different things is just that, it, that is commitment month. And I think when you really look at, uh, you know, a player cycle nowadays, I think you can really circle April and you can really circle July as two months that are always going to probably be heavy for commitments. And it's because of one, you know, just those personal one on one kind of visits that you get in April and and just kind of. You know, usually by the time you do that, you've done the game day kind of experience, right? So uh, you, you get that relationship perspective and you get to see spring practice and it's a massively important part. Uh, and then two, of course, then you have those official visits in June, which then lead to commitments in July. 
uh, before the season starts. So I uh, just the, just the number of commitments that we've seen in April now, uh, that number's up to 14 now since James Franklin took charge. And uh, you could pretty much scrub two of those years, you know, because of the pandemic. And, and so when you when you drop that down to what is it, uh, 14 commitments, I think six or so years, uh, we, you know, when you include his one full class starting in 2015, not 2014, of course. But uh, I think that's pretty good numbers. And I think it just speaks to the importance of April and, uh, you know, what that month has become, uh, you know, in the in the grand scheme of things. And then one other thing I wanted to highlight, too, was Phil Trotwine and his push in Georgia. Uh, Penn State had four offensive linemen from Georgia visit in April, which uh, if you would have told me that in, in, in March, uh, I wouldn't have believed it. Uh, actually, I should I should clarify. It was three in April, one in March, uh, but four during absolute, um, you know, normal spring practice time. Uh, Nathan Afobi, uh, March 19th. He was the one, of course, that came up uh, in, in March. And then Paul Mubanga came May 8th uh, or excuse, May 8th, April 8th. Uh, Connor Liu came on April 4th. And Zach Owens, of course, came for the blue white game. So I think just it speaks to, you know, how much uh, Troutwine is making that a priority. I think Mubanga and Zach Owens are the two that make the most sense. Uh, Connor Lou's a true center prospect, and I'm not exactly, you know, I really feel like they, they're they shooting for tackles, right? And then Nathan Afobi, Nathan seems like he's going to take his time, really kind of drag it out. You know, he, he doesn't really plan on committing until probably um, sometime in the, in, in the season. So that, that doesn't really work with what Penn State's timeline is at the moment. But uh, Zach Owens, like I said, I, I'm kind of considering putting in a pick for Penn State with Zach Owens. I, I, I think that they made a massively – major uh impression on him and uh you know clemson's in the mix there too but you know there's some people in lash i think they they're the favorite with zach owens now and and i kind of think they are too all right well i think that if we know anything ryan that all the things that came and went in april between commitments and a large number of visitors and obviously penn state learning where it stands with a number of key targets in the class of 2023 when you wrap all that up you, you know that a lot happened but there's so much more to, to break down and look forward to, uh, which we'll do each week here on the BWI Daily Recruiting Show as May continues. So I guess we've hit this point of the show for final thoughts. I mean, for me, I think that clearly uh, it's worth noting that the transfer portal deadline, uh, if you had, to, you had to ask to be entered into it by Sunday night, uh, May 1st. Mm -hmm. uh, so as we talk here on May 3, it's not out of the question that somebody could have asked late Sunday and was just not the paperwork didn't get done yet, whatever. So they didn't go into the portal yet. At this point, we don't know if anyone is joining Cole Brevard. We don't believe so, but time will tell. So keep an eye on that because as uh, Dave Eckert has tracked, I mean, they're at 85 scholarships right now. So uh, mm -hmm. if they wanted to add anybody else, they would need some kind of movement elsewhere uh, within the program. So uh, surprised me. I don't know about you, but certainly surprised me i thought after spring practice we'd see a few guys go well i think that 85 count too also includes maybe one of the long snappers like is it crystal crystal yep. so yeah. you know obviously i think crystal would love to stay on scholarship but like we've just seen in the past that you know they could if they need to get a linebacker in here or somebody like that which we've talked about right. for a long time it, it could potentially change but uh I don't know. I mean, I, I personally don't think anyone's going to be outgoing now. I think we would have seen that uh, as of, what, 1230 on Tuesday. But, you know, you can never really rule it out. I, I guess I just want to switch real quick. I brought it up earlier. Like, dude, what do you think of this Jordan Addison stuff? Like, you and I haven't really even talked about this off the air. But, you know, USC seems like they're going to get him. Still in the Bolitnikoff winner. And there's a lot of talk that the way it all started was he just has a relationship with Caleb Williams. Because, of course, the coaches aren't really allowed to contact him. Right. Um, but the players can do whatever they want, you know? So Correct. it's just, it's wild. It's, it's just, it's wild to me. I, I don't know what way to put it, but, uh, man, if this is direction we're going to go, and if this doesn't get changed in a couple of years, like I can just, like, I'm dreading next off season. If this is the kind of stuff right. that we're going to have to focus on. Yeah, so for those that are unaware, let me just pull up the story here so I have all the details. April 30th, uh, so right in the middle of the NFL draft, when else would something like this come up? Uh, there was a there was a, a leak to ESPN's Pete Damlin and some others that Jordan Addison was uh, possibly going to end up at USC, enter the transfer portal and end up at USC, uh, mostly due to NIL stuff and, and Pitt. I would love to hear the voicemails that Pat Narduzzi left Lane Kiffin. I'm sure they are yeah, not, right. Uh, I, I don't think we could air those on this show, T. Frank, I, unless you have a big bleep button. I don't think that those would uh, be okay to put here on the show. But not one that's yeah. live. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, hey there, exactly. T. Frank. So, What's going on? Yes. 
So um, you'll hear T. Frank again throughout the rest of this week on the BWI Daily Show, which, of course, is on YouTube and everywhere you get your audio. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, I, I guess I would just say this, you know, let's see if it happens first. But it does it serve as a good reminder of that, you know, while there's these rules in place that, all oh, coaches can't do this and blah, blah, blah. It's always, always, always going to work itself out if it's going to work itself out. What I mean by that is Lane Kiffin might not be able to get in touch with uh, Jordan Addison or anybody else, but the players on his team certainly can. And you can contact their trainers and their parents can be involved. And I mean, there's so much going on behind the scenes or always has been. It's a little bit more out in the open now, but yeah, I mean, I think we all knew that stuff like this was a strong possibility uh, moving forward, but uh, certainly the way it's being presented is maybe happening at a little bit quicker pace than expected. And who knows, you know, you can sit here if you're a Penn state fan and laugh at Pitt all you want, but you never know when Penn state or anyone could be on the wrong side of something like this. Greg's still living in uh what was it? 2000? You, you said Lane Kiffin, but sorry, it's Lincoln Riley. Oh, Lincoln Riley. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm still a few Greg, years back. Yes. Greg's still living into yeah. 2000, uh, whatever that was 2006. <laughs> I think that was like, I don't know. That was back in the day anyway. Um, but, but also just the one thing I want to say is like when you have so much influence from boosters now, uh, you know, there's nothing stopping a, a massive booster or some sort of collective connection from going and doing this. And that's what I think right. this was. And, and maybe Caleb Williams to some degree kind of kickstarting it, but uh, the NCA, I don't know if they can fix this. I don't really see any way that they can, honestly. But right. man, if this is the direction we're going. I, I don't really, and like, I'll, I'll just, I, I want to end this soon, but like, does Penn State get into this kind of stuff? Because I don't, I don't think that this is something that a lot of Penn State fans would, would, no. I mean, maybe some do because they want to win, but I think there's a large segment of the Penn State fan base that like would not want them to be, you know, kind of going behind the scenes and, and being slimy and, and stealing guys. So, you know, to me, when I just see these kind of things, I don't look at it as an advantage for for this program and what this program has always been about. Uh, it, it just could be another example of the rich getting richer. And and man, I just I just hope this doesn't continue because it, it really kind of worries me a little bit. And uh, this was a, a massive story that I've tried to follow really closely. No question. We'll continue following it. I mean, yeah, my thought is just this. I mean, at some point, again, I think Paul Feinbaum from ESPN said it recently, but uh, you're just going to have to get to the point of having it's going to be minor league football. It's not going to be college football. I I just don't Mm -hmm. see any way around it unless some of this stuff gets reined in. But at the same time, uh, how can you say that, you know, after years of not allowing players to profit off of name, image and likeness, you're going to allow it? but then put a cap on what they can get. Or maybe that is what's going to happen. Then it'll be like a salary cap at each school. I don't know. Um, but, you know, things will still get done behind closed doors. It's always worked that way in this sport. I'm not ready to call it the end of college football as we know it yet. And no. I do think that, um, you know, I do think that there's going to be instances like this where stories get reported and then things don't happen or they do happen, but they don't work out very well. I mean, what? If you're a USC player and you see this go down, and you might be yep. getting a little something and you see him getting a lot of something. Uh, if you are in a role, like it's just like the Miami basketball player. What, I'm not sure whatever. I'm just going to bring that up. His holdout, yeah, I was going to bring yeah. that up. If his holdout continues or not, uh, for those unaware, there's a Miami basketball player who's uh, NIL agent, which is a thing now, uh, basically said that, you know, if he doesn't get more money than some other guys on the team, he's going to leave. He wants his name, image, and likeness to reflect that of someone who helped lead Miami to a pretty good run in the postseason, even though I don't think he was necessarily the uh, major driving force of that. He was a good player, but I I say a wall. I mean, yeah. 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 I I just. uh, You know, again, you can do all this stuff and it sounds great and looks great. It might make your roster better initially, but you're going to cause so much internal strife within your team potentially that, you know, I I think that uh, Pat Kraft, the incoming Penn State Athletic Director, said it best last week within 24 months, which I know seems like a long time from now. But I agree with him. I think this thing will be dialed back a little bit. I think that the craziness that we're seeing now is not going to continue. I could be wrong. I'm wrong a lot, but. (laughs) <laughs> um, you know, I think you're going to have to live with sort of the bumpiness of the next two years or so. And then once things kind of settle down uh, within three or four years, I do think that it will not be it will not end up being as drastically different as what it may look like it's going to be right now. I hope. I hope, man, because that, that's a that's a scary story uh, and for, for just the, the overall health of college football, I think so. 
Uh, well, I mean, of course, I, I want Jordan Addison to, to get what he deserves too, you know, so that there's there's both sides to that. But, man, if teams are able to just pluck away Blitnikoff award winners because of NIL deals, right. man, like this this could really go downhill quick. So we'll end it on that, man, but that, that was just something on my mind a lot, and uh, I felt like it was a good time to chat about that. Stay tuned for the latest Penn State and college football recruiting news, team news, and everything else you need to know to follow the sport you love and we love at bluewhiteillustrated.com. For Thomas Frank Carr and Ryan Schneider, I'm Greg Pickle. We'll catch you next week. It's been another edition of the BWI Daily Recruiting Show. See you next time.